Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating a 2D fighting game in Unreal Engine 4. My name's Wes and I've been taking you for all these amazing episodes so far. Again, I just want to thank you guys enough for the support you've given me. It's been absolutely amazing. I hear some of you are starting to make your own games, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just keep going with it. So what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to set up the second player controls. Um, it's going to be very basic for now. It's going to get a little bit more complicated when we start moving into the series, for example, when we're going to add animations like punching and uh, kicking animations and, and different control features for each one of those aspects. So this one's going to be pretty basic and then later on it's going to improve um, further on during the video. So make sure you watch those when we get when we get to that point. So without further ado, let's get started. So where we left off last time is inside the game process itself. We managed to get to a point where the camera was panning in and out wherever the character was moving and we got the character to jump and obviously the second player controller couldn't move. Um, so we need to set that up and we need to make sure that we can get the second player to work on a different set of controls and we also need to fix up the controls for player one. Now this is very easy to do. It's not It's not difficult. It's a very easy tutorial this one. We're going to go into the project settings and basically in here we can set a, a, bit, a lot of information inside the project settings itself. What we're after is all the input keys now these are going to be able to control our character and how they move. But we're going to look at the access mappings first. And if we look at the move right, basically this is how player one is moving at the moment. He's got all these controls allocated to him. So he's got A, D, gamepad, left stick, and then left and right. We're going to just limit him to A and D for now. So we're just going to keep him using WASD keys for player one. So if you could imagine, now we set move right to just A and D. Our action mappings, you can see we've got a jump control. We want to set that because we're using WASD keys, we just want to set that to W. So he's only going to be able to jump with a W key. So what we need to do is we need to set up one for our player two character. So we're going to add another axis mapping here. And basically this one we're going to call, and we can just call it player two if we want. So you can call it whatever you like. I don't really want to change this now because it's already been set. So I don't want to go through messing about and changing it all. Normally you just delete them all and start again. But if we have a look at, um, Play one, so technically he's move right, but in, in this case it's it's play one. We've got A and D and then we've got scale values. For player two, we're gonna use left and right. So if we just type in left, you can see a keyboard left. So A would be left. And then if we want to add the next one, which is gonna be the right key, we'll just type in right. And that way we've got control of the right. We've got to make sure the scale's correct. So we want to make sure that's minus one and that's one. It's very important that we set that up because obviously it's gonna be moving the wrong way and we don't want that to happen. We also want to add one for him to jump. So we're going to um, call this player to jump. So we're going to put that in. And basically we're just going to put this up as the up key. So because obviously he's using the um, little control pad here, we're going to set that up to the up. Obviously if you're using controllers, you can set up for controllers. Obviously later on in further tutorial series, we'll start looking at uh, when it becomes multiplayer, choosing certain keys for certain characters and how do we change them. We'll look at that and that'll be in the menu systems in the menu system section when we get there. So that's pretty much all set up for what we need. So just remember this is player two jump for obviously jumping and then this one's called player two here. So we can pretty much close this now. It automatically saves which is quite nice. We can just close that up. And basically if I had to play now, you can't see because you can't see my hands, but if I'm pressing A and D you'll see the character moves. If I press the arrow keys, he doesn't move anymore. If I press space, nothing's happening. If I press W, however, he jumps. If I'm pressing up, he doesn't jump because we've preset those keys. So we don't need to worry about those anymore interfering with obviously the player one controls. So how do we set it up? Well, it's very simple. We're going to go into this player controller because remember we said in this player controller, we're going to set up player two's controller as well. So basically we just need to set up some values. Um, remember in the last episode we created the jump value here. All we're going to do is we're going to set up play two controls. Now remember what we did is we gave them some names. So if we go back and we just look at what the names were, project settings, and go back to input. Oh, where are you going to input? Input. There you are. In our access mappings we got one called player two. So if we search for player two, so player two, you'll see that we have the action events here. So we got play to jump, which we don't want, but we want the play to controller actions, which is something we definitely want. 
And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do pretty much the same as not all this. It's nice and easy for play too, but we need this note here, this add movement input. So we drag off, we're going to add movement. We're going to have to turn context sensitive off. So we're going to add movement input. Okay, pretty straightforward. We're going to add the movement for the character. The axis value is, axis value is going to go into the scale. And all we need to do is get our reference to our character. So we're going to pull him off. I'm going to say get. And we're going to plug him into the target. So basically, this is just saying we're going to press the input keys either left and right. We're going to add some movement input to our character. And we're going to scale the value to either negative or positive. However, we need to make sure the world direction is correct. And that's going to be set to 1. Okay, so positive 1. Not negative, otherwise it'll go the opposite way around. Depending on how you set up your keys, obviously the world direction might be different in some instances. So if I had to compile, save, and play, if I try and move the second character, you can see he now moves with the left and right key, but he moves completely different to how this guy moves, which is um, you can see that the, the body sort of switches when he's moving left or right. So we need to set that up so that works. And how we do that is we need to get access to our actual character himself. So if we just quickly swap over, and we're going to go into our 2D side scroller character. And we're going to do some work inside this, this area here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to delete all of this. Just keep these two. So we're going to keep these two here. Now say this is going to get a lot more bigger than it is. Um, so make sure you keep some space because we might need it for future episodes to come. Now basically this is going to update the animation to either idle or running animation. If you double click on it, you see it goes to that, that event there. But basically what we want to do is we want to keep the animation happening. And this is going to get a lot more in depth with the animation. But what we want to do is here, we want to find out where he is it, what and which direction he should be pointing in in regards to rotation. And this is very easy to do. Um, so what we can do is we can get the movement component. So get movement component. Okay. So basically this movement component is the pawn himself. So i.e. Um, the 2D side scroller character. And basically with that, we want to, actually I shouldn't have deleted all that beginning bit. We need to get his velocity. Sorry, I shouldn't have deleted all that. It doesn't matter. We can get the velocity. And basically we want to break that vector. We're going to break it because we want the values. And once we've done that, I just want to show you what's going to happen. So if I just print a string so we can see what we get in return. So basically we want to find out what we're going to get off this X value here. So when he's moving. So if we just compile and save and play, see it's at currently set to a zero value. We go negative and we then go positive here. So we can see that the values are constantly changing between each other. And that's okay for us because we can quite simply just write a little bit of math for us. So we can say, okay, well, if it's gone negative, we can change its direction. If it's gone positive, we can then change the direction again. Again, this is very basic. For those advanced users, obviously there's a better way of doing this, but I'm keeping it easy for now until we move into a later part of the series. So what we're going to do is get rid of that print string. That X value, basically we just want to find out if it's greater to or equal to, so the float. And is it going to be, sorry, is this going to be less than and equal to zero? Now remember it was going positive and negative, obviously if he's standing still at zero. So it's important that we have that equals to there because we want to make sure his orientation is correct. So as you already know, this is going to be attached to a Boolean. So it's going to be a branch that we need. And basically we need to find out, is this going to be true or is this going to be false? Let me just neaten this up a little bit. Not that neat. Well, that's a good job. <laughs> right. So what we need to do is all we're going to do off this true statement is we're going to set the actor rotation. So set the actor rotation. Rotation. Oh, I can't even spell. Set the actor rotation. We're going to copy and paste this twice. Copy and paste that. So we need one for the false value. And it's as easy as this. What we're going to say is on the Z axis for us for our actor ro rotation here, it's going to be 180. And on this one, it's going to be set to zero. So basically, if he is less than or equal to zero, so if it's negative, if it's true, we're going to go 180 degrees. If it's more, we're going to stick with our zero value. So we don't want to swap. So if I compile and play that, if I move to the right, you can see he swaps. 
if I move left, E Storm walks in the same direction. And obviously if I let go, he flips back to zero so that way we can get that zero value. So we can see that both characters now can move on the map. And as I said, if you move one character away, the camera will change. So now we can test with player two now, which is pretty cool. And the same with this, so we can change that. We jump the character, oh, we can't jump here. We jump that character over and move. You can see that we can move this value. Obviously not facing each other. We can, we can set that up later to face each other. And then we can see that it's moving here. Um, yeah, we'll set that up in another series actually to get the, the characters to face each other if they jump over each other. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So we can see that the camera is now moving as we want to. However, we've got no jump feature for play two. So we just need to set that up quite quickly. So we'll just compile and save this one. And we're going to go back to our play controller because this is where we are controlling our player two. And it's as easy as putting in our other inputs. So remember we called it, was it player two jump or something? We got play to jump. And basically when it's pressed, we want to do exactly the same idea of what we've done in this section. So just here, so where this jump control is, so we can actually copy that and just paste that here. And so when we press it, we want to jump. And what we want to do is we want to plug our character two into this section here. So basically the character two will jump if we press this control. So if I compile, save and play, what should happen now is that player two should be able to jump and so can player one. I can jump in the directions that I want to jump in so I can actually switch direction midair. Um, we can change this. This is just um, some settings that we can do inside the character and set that all up. That's not an issue. And now what you have is two players playing, one with WASD keys at the moment and one with arrow keys. Obviously in a few more series to come, we're going to set up um, controls. Um, luckily someone sent me a link for some sprites. So I've actually got those now. I will share them with you. I first want to find out if I can use them for educational purposes before I put them in my videos. But yeah, we'll, we'll get that sorted. So before I, I leave you, um, there's just something I want to mention. I came across um, this guy's channel. His, his name's um, Unreal Game Dev. It's spelled a little bit incorrectly, maybe because you can get Unreal Game Dev. I came across some of his tutorials. So a lot of you have asked me for different aspects of tutorials. This gentleman here has tons of tutorials in Unreal Engine 4. They're really good. Please, guys, he hasn't, he, has, he hasn't asked me to do this. I actually contacted him because I came across his channel and I thought it was really good educational purpose. If you guys have got channels that you want me to, to mention, just give me a shout and I, I'm happy to share because a bigger community is a better community. So give this guy a shout, give him some love. Um, his new series looks really interesting, which is the skill tree system. He's just started it um, and it's really, really interesting. So it's, it's a good idea to maybe check that out. So. Again, thank you very much, guys, for joining me in this episode. It was um, great taking you for this session. It was nice, short, and sweet. Hopefully, you guys can get that to work again. If you get confused, just leave a comment in the, in the comment section, and I'll try to answer you as quick as I can. Again, thank you very much for joining me. My name is Bean Waza. If you really like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you really, really like this, then hit the subscribe button. If you really, really, really like it, then don't forget to get your friends. Sorry, share it with your friends. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.